Hi, welcome back to Matt's Garage. Uh, we're in the meat of putting together a Bronco, early Bronco body tub from scratch. This is a 1973. The principles are pretty much the same for any restoration. So where I'm at with this is I finished the basically the rocker panel and seat and floor pans. That's done and square, uh, as well as the bed is laid in there and clecoed in there for reference. When you're restoring a Bronco, one of the things that is hard to wrap your head around for a first time or is how does everything really fit together? So I'm gonna lay it out and explain why I'm doing the approach I'm doing. I was originally trying to get the striker post, the front door post, and the rock on the uh, rocker, yeah, the outer rocker um, lined up. It's really hard to do when you're building a tub from scratch because this is what I call the wing wall. I don't know what the actual name of it is. Kick, kick panel? Kick panel. This goes here. And there, you know, there's these holes. And the, you know, when you buy it, it doesn't come with these holes. This is for spot welding. But it does come with these three holes. Big hole, two oval holes. And that matches holes in the rocker pan. Okay? But go look on your Bronco. They may line up. They, they may line up. They may be a little bit off. So you have to hold this, you can't burn it in place because you can't do that until you know where your door post sits. Then you have your door post here. This goes in here, like that, all right? But whether it's like this or like this or somewhere in between, that is really determined by your, uh, your setup here, right? So it's hard to, okay, do I click over here, do I click it? Where do I click over to start? Where is it height-wise? Where is it in and out? It's very difficult to do. Uh, the, and then also to mount your rocker panel and all that. So that, that goes here. I'll just clamp it into place so you can see. Okay, so that goes there. Then this piece, which is where your striker goes. For some reason on the passenger side, it comes in welted primer. On the driver's side, it comes in this uh, black. EDP coating. I think it's EDP. And that just slides in this pinch between the uh, cross member support or the, the floor pan support uh, and the, uh, the rocker. That, that actually that stays without me doing anything, but I, I, I like to clamp it so it stays put. The outer rocker sits in here but this is angling down so this whole thing needs to come up and then i don't know if this relationship is right so i was really struggling to try to keep it clamped and you know i can't burn anything in so that's why i've come up with a different approach it's because i know the doors are the most important part of the bronco right and the doors are complex because a lot of panels come together at that point okay and You've got the height of this, the height of this, the hard top, the angles here, the angles like this. I mean, there's just everything is in flux at this point, right? And the doors have their own weight and blah, 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 blah. And the hinges and the given the hinges, blah, 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 blah. There's all these things that come together. And it's just too much for me to take on. So I started thinking with my brain, how do I, how do I tackle this, right? And... The solution came to me in a vision while I was in New Jersey. And that is, get your door panel set up. Okay. Hang your rocker and get the back of the Bronco set and square. I've got my snap line there. If I can get the back set and make sure that not only is this correct plumb square and everything but also in relation to the same setup on the other side I can then tack that in put my hard top on okay and then I know this is getting to be like a bit of a wily e. coyote plan here but I think it's gonna work we're gonna catch that road runner okay you put the hard top on okay, then I'm gonna basically put in uh, what do they call those things? Use them in construction? I should know this. I'm a construction guy. Shoring. Put in shoring to support the hardtop. Hang my door from the hardtop. Hang the windshield frame from the hardtop. Okay? 
And that'll help me because the back will be solid, right? At least tacked in. Have all that here, and then as I'm assembling everything else, I'm assembling it to a part, the hard top, that's integral to the fit, okay? And it'll provide support, and it'll help me keep square, and I'll not be surprised when I go put the hard top on later. That is the new plan. How many episodes it's going to take? How many times I'm going to abandon it and go to a different plan? I don't know, but let's get to it. Okay, this clamp is clamping the little extension piece that fits between these two, and this then slides over it, and right now it's just sitting on the lip of that. That looks pretty level, right between my dots. So this is kind of how, you know, I got my bed, this, and this pinches on there, and I think the uh, the cab fits into this somehow. Let me just go check my Bronco. Couple things are happening. One, the the this end needs to slide like that behind there, right? So you see this raised face for the inspection port. You can see the paint's getting scratched off. That's because it's hitting there. So I need to open this up a little bit, and that, and I was clearancing that. I think that's good enough, but I need to open this up. Alright, so you can see this is the initial fit up. Um, it's a pretty clean line. It's really cool to see the Bronco with the uh, fender on though. You know, the, or the, the uh, quarter panel, you know, like one of the first things I took off. So to have it be there again is super nice. You can see it comes out a little too far at the top there. I don't know if I can... I need to get that to sit in more. I think if I open this up a little bit, it'll get there. Um, but in terms of fitment issues, I think this this uh, brace needs to come back a little bit because there's a gap here. So if I pull this back, this will square that up and that'll join. But yeah, I mean, and you can also see I blasted it all apart and I'm just, getting this to be 90 on all the axes, so this way and this way. So now that's 90, and it's clecoed in with three clecos. With clamps, it gets pretty shaky, but the clecos have it nice and, I mean, it moves, but it's, it's a lot steadier. I mean, it can actually hold a decent amount of weight this way. So I've got one here and two on the back here. Um, there's a lot of massaging that needs to happen. Let me give you an example. So these two theoretically go together, right? Now, you see this profile here on this edge? Well, it doesn't match the profile here, right? So when you, when you try to put them together, this profile is different from this profile, which is keeping it from nesting in there and sitting flush. It's doing it at the top, fine. But once it gets to here, it's hitting here. So I need to, and I need to bend this in. I've cut it a little bit. That helped a little tiny bit, but it's not nearly enough. So basically I need to create a profile here. And there is some support here. This is what holds the uh, tailgate on. So I can't weaken this too much. 
but bending it doesn't really weaken it. If I cut it, that would weaken it. Let me show you guys what I'm doing right now. See, this piece slides in there, right? I've actually had to profile this to get it to sit close to flush with the end cap. You can see this is a pretty good gap. That's like almost there. I'm just going to profile a little more and then what I'm realizing is why that quarter was sticking out was this also needs to be shaved down. Because obviously if it's, I can't, I have no more play to pull the um, taillight housing this way. So when I put the quarter on, it sits proud. So I need to take the bandsaw and just sh shave off like an eighth. It's not perfect yet. But that is pretty pretty darn close. Gaps a little more than I would like, but looks like this is bowed up a bit. It's really close, guys. I might just profile that a little bit. Down here, it looks really good. Up here, it looks pretty good. God, I wish I could just weld that together. I don't know how many hours it's going to take for me to do this, but to me it's it's time well spent. If you get that the fitting right, it really makes all the difference in the finished product, in my opinion, being a first-timer, not knowing anything. Uh, it really is, you have to dig deep and figure out, do you have the time and the personality to really get into the detail? I'm actually not that detail-oriented. Uh, I'm a huge fan of good enough, right? Perfect is the enemy of progress. Uh, it, it's just not good enough right now. So I'm just going to get it good enough, and I'll be happy with that. If, if, if my gaps are better than the factory, I'm calling it a win. I know guys, my neighbor Carl, he spends a ton of time making sure everything's perfect. I mean, he, to the point of actually slitting uh, the door and stretching it out and tigging that gap so that the door lines up perfectly with the uh, quarters and the fenders. I don't think I'm gonna get to that level, but I'm gonna get as close as I can with the parts I have. Uh, super excited to keep this going. It's giving me energy to get to this part of the build. Uh, won't really know if it's good enough until the rubber meets the road and I get the door going, but I'm doing it. I'm a first timer. Some special tools, but mostly just Thinking. It's a rare art these days. See you next time on Matt's Garage.